A Dutch auction is an auction where the seller sets a price at the start of the auction and the price goes down over time. When the buyer decides that the price is low enough and he buys, the auction ends. A Dutch auction works like an expensive fashion clothes that goes on sale. Imagine that a brand t-shirt is selling for $300. You think that the t-shirt is overpriced and over time the t-shirt will go on sale. At first the t-shirt goes to 10% sale. You still think it's too expensive. Next the t-shirt goes on sale for 20%. The t-shirt is still not sold, 30%, still expensive. T-shirt goes on sale for 50% and at that point you decide that it is a good deal and you decide to buy the t-shirt. Essentially, this is how Dutch auction works. Initially, the price is set high by the seller. Over time, the price decreases. When the buyer thinks that it is a good deal, he decides to buy, ending the auction. For this example, we'll write a Dutch auction for an NFT, a ERC721. We'll say that the duration of this auction is 7 days, so we'll say uint private constant capital duration is equal to 7 days. Next, we'll store some state variables. We'll need to store the address of the NFT and the NFT ID that we're selling for this auction. So the NFT contract will be IERC721. I'll make this variable public. This variable will not change after the contract is deployed. We don't want to start an auction for an NFT and halfway through be able to switch the NFT that we're selling. So we'll make this immutable. This means that after we deploy the contract, this variable cannot be changed. And it also saves gas. We will name this variable NFT. We also need to store the ID of the NFT that we're selling. So we'll say uint public. Again, we don't want this variable to be able to change. So we'll make it immutable and then name it NFT ID. Next, we'll store the address of the seller. So I'll say address public seller. Now the seller will not change during the duration of the auction, so we also make this immutable. A Dutch auction needs a starting price, so we'll say uint public. This starting price will not change, so we'll also make this immutable, and I'll name it starting price. We'll need to store some timestamp. Timestamp for when the auction starts and when the auction ends. So we'll say uint public immutable start at and also you and public immutable expires at and the last variable we will store is the discount rate the discount rate will determine the rate at which the price decreases starting from the starting price so we'll say you and public immutable discount rate next we'll initialize these state variables in a constructor so we'll type constructor, we'll pass in the starting price, uint starting price, the discount rate, uint discount rate, the address of the NFT contract, address, NFT, and the NFT ID, uint NFT ID. We'll set the seller to the deployer of this contract, so that will be message.sender, so I'll type seller is equal to message.sender now after the nft is sold we will need to transfer eth to seller so we'll make message.sender payable and we also say that the address seller that is set over here we also make this payable so address payable public immutable seller we'll set the starting price to the starting price from the input the discount rate also from the input we will also set the nft from the input so by typing nft is equal to ierc721 nft from the input and the nft id by saying nft id is equal to nft id from the input before we complete the constructor let's write a simple check to make sure that the price of the nft is always greater than or equal to zero. So we start at the starting price, and from the starting price, we minus the discount rate every second. So for the duration of this auction, the maximum amount that can be discounted will be discount rate times the duration of the auction, 
which will be seven days. So here we'll check that the price is always greater than or equal to zero by saying require starting price. Notice that I'm using starting price from the input and not from the state variable. This is because for immutable state variables, the state variable cannot be accessed inside the constructor. So you'll have to use the input. Starting price is greater than or equal to, again, discount rate from the input, discount rate times duration. This is the maximum amount of price deduction that is applied to the starting price. So as long as starting price is greater than or equal to this amount over here, the price will be greater than zero. If the condition above fails, we'll say that the error message is starting price is less than discount. I forgot to add the start at and expires at, so I'll do that right now. So we'll say start at, the auction starts when this contract is deployed. So start at block that timestamp. Expires at will be from the start at the duration. So it'll be expires at is equal to block dot timestamp plus duration. And that completes the constructor. Next, we'll write a function to calculate the current price of the NFT. I'll name this function get price. This will be public function since we're going to be using this function to calculate the current price of the NFT when the buyer calls the buy function. So that is why this is public and not external. This function will be view and returns the price. So it will returns uint. The current price of the NFT will be return starting price minus the discount. And what is the discount? Well, the discount will be equal to discount rate times time elapsed since the auction started. And the time elapsed is equal to the current timestamp minus the timestamp when the auction started, which is stored in start at. So notice that the price of this auction will always be decreasing from the starting price. The last function that we'll write is buy. Users will be able to call buy to buy the NFT. So we'll type function buy. To buy the NFT, the caller will have to send ether to this contract. So we'll make it external payable. We'll first require that this auction has not expired yet. So we'll type require current timestamp is less than expires at. In other words, the current timestamp is less than seven days since the auction started. The error message, I'll type auction expired. Next, we'll check that message.sender has sent enough amount of ether to this contract. So we'll first get the current price by typing uint price is equal to get price. This is the function that we wrote above over here. And then we'll check that the amount that was sent is greater than or equal to the price by typing require message.value greater than equal to price. The error message, I'll say if less than price. Once we know that message.sender has sent enough amount of ether to buy the NFT, We'll transfer the ownership of NFT by typing nft.transfer from. The current owner of the NFT is the seller. The new owner of the NFT will be message.sender. And the NFT that we're selling is NFT ID. Once we transfer the NFT, we'll refund the excess ETH that was sent when the function buy was called. Notice that the condition here is that message.value is greater than or equal to price. So if the buyer sends too much ETH, then we'll refund the buyer. So we'll type uint refund is equal to message dot value minus minus the price. And we'll type if refund is greater than zero, then we'll send the refund back over to message dot sender by saying payable message dot sender dot transfer refund. 
Lastly, we'll send the ETH to the seller and close this auction. Now, there are several ways to close this auction. For example, we can have a state variable saying that the auction finished and disable the buy function when the auction is finished. Another way to close the auction is to just delete this contract. So we'll do that here. So we'll type self destruct to seller. So this line of code accomplishes the two things that we wanted. Send all of the ETH to the seller and then close the auction. It closes the auction by deleting the contract. Let's deploy this contract and then do an NFT Dutch auction. I'll hit Ctrl S to compile the contract. Notice that here I have already prepared the NFT. I got the code for the NFT by going to Solidity by example and then clicking on ERC721 and then clicking on copy button. Paste it into Remix and then compile the contract. We'll deploy the NFT contract first. So I'll compile the NFT contract and then click on the NFT contract, hit deploy. And then we'll create an NFT to sell for the Dutch auction. So I'll call the function mint. It takes in two parameter, the address to mint and the token ID to mint. The owner of this NFT will be this contract. Paste it here and the NFT ID that I'm gonna mint I'll just put in 777 and then hit transact. Next, we'll need to deploy the Dutch auction contract. So I'm going to select the Dutch auction contract, hit Control S to compile it. And now I can select the Dutch auction for the contract to deploy. Here are the parameters that I need to pass. Starting price, I'll put it to 1 million. Discount rate, I'll just keep it simple and say 1, meaning that every second, the starting price will be decreased by one. The address of the NFT, which we deployed over here, and the NFT ID that we're selling is 777, and then hit transact. So now our Dutch auction contract is deployed. The next thing that we need to do is approve the Dutch auction to spend our NFT. So I'll expand the NFT contract, and then we'll need to call the approve function. The address that we need to paste in here is the Dutch auction contract. So I'll copy the address of the Dutch auction contract, paste it here. The token that we're selling is 777 and then hit transact. So now our auction has started for anyone to buy our NFT. I'll open the Dutch auction contract. And if I click on get price, notice that this is the price, which is less than the starting price. I wait a few seconds and when I call get price again, notice that the price has decreased slightly. Currently, this will be the minimum amount of ETH and way that we need to send to buy the NFT. So I'll copy this and scroll up, change the account. We'll send that much amount to buy the NFT and then click on buy. The buy was successful. So if you go back to the NFT contract, and then check the owner of the NFT. The NFT that was sold was 777. Click on owner of, and that is the new owner of the NFT. Scrolling up, you can see that the owner of the new NFT is this address over here, and not the first address that first minted the NFT.